Um, what, what are you, what are you doing down there? Uh, oh, oh, hey, hey guys, it's Dan Riley CG here. Uh, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to remove those annoying offline players. All right, that's that's critical. Look at all, look at all those annoying. I have three player offlines. That ugh, disgusting. Let's get rid of that. So. It's actually quite simple, and I'm making this video because despite the fact that there's a lot of videos on this topic, a lot of them aren't that great. A lot of people making these videos don't know how the systems work themselves, and or they don't know how to explain them. I don't know which. It's a little bit of both, I think. So here I am making this video. Hopefully you guys will have a much stronger understanding after this video, um, and you can make some cool things in the future with what I teach you here. So let's get started. I'm gonna go over the command blocks really quickly initially, um, so that you can just see the code if you want to just look at the code quickly because people have been saying that they would like to see the code in this instantly. So Let's do that So here um, First repeat unconditional always active Here's the code test for a day And then chain conditional always active Here's the command and this is gonna make two different scoreboards equal each other here we're gonna take away a scoreboard. So this is gonna be impulse un unconditional needs redstone. And here's the command. And now we're going to add a scoreboard, chain unconditional always active. Now we're going to set that new scoreboard to display, chain unconditional always active. And if you guys notice, yes, all these chain blocks, all these blocks in general are all unconditional, okay? All unconditional, and that's unusual because most systems would break if they were all set to unconditional. But this is one of those few systems that works flawlessly if it's also set to unconditional. And in fact, you should leave it unconditional, not conditional. And I'll show you why at the end. So here we're, like I said, we're adding a display. And now we're going to add zero to all players on the original scoreboard. Okay, so as you've seen, we have a comparator going from this block with redstone dust and an observer looking at that dust powering this impulse block. Okay, now let's get into how and why the system works and why it's so so awesome. And trust me, it's it's actually not too complicated. So first, test for at A. Test for at A is so powerful in this game, in Bedrock. We don't have a whole lot of features available to us compared to Java, but this is pretty cool that we have at least this. So test for at A, when inside a block, a repeating block, whether it's always active or currently, currently active with redstone, it will test for all players in the game, and if there are players in the game, it will constantly give off a positive, like a successful outcome. And every time it's successful, it runs successfully, it will run the commands above it, of course. So at all times in the game, while this is successful, which means there's a player in the game, this command will always be running with it. And this command is basically executing at all players and making each player, it's making each player's scoreboard value on one scoreboard equal to a scoreboard on another scoreboard. So so basically what that's doing is it's copying, it's inheriting, the player is inheriting their value from, inheriting the value from the second scoreboard, so money, and it's being stored into the new one called money display. So if you have an old scoreboard that you have all these players that you need to remove, all these offline players that you need to remove, what you wanna do is you leave that untouched. You're not going to touch that scoreboard that's going to remain as is because you don't want to mess anything up. You don't want to lose any data. Just leave that as is. And you would put that as your the second the second scoreboard, okay? Doesn't matter what's called, it doesn't have to be called money, whatever you've called it, that's fine. But just place that second because it's going to copy those values into whatever scoreboard you put here. So when it says equals, it's gonna equal this one. It's gonna add these values into this one, okay? So just to make things easier for us to read it back. It's become common practice for these systems to call to call it money display, especially if you're going to be displaying it. So if you currently have a, just one money scoreboard and it's currently set to display, don't worry, it's not going to affect anything. Just put your money second like this and make a new scoreboard called money display. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what the name is called, just add display or something like that at the end, just so you understand that this is your scoreboard that's designed only for displaying. It just makes it easier. That's what it's for. So basically, um, at all points and times in the game, um, at every moment that any player is active, all active players in that game will have their values copied from money and copied right into money display and then displayed on screen. 
okay? So the reason this works, and another property that makes test for at A so amazing, I'm not done yet, trust me. What makes what makes test for at A great is not the fact that it, when, when it runs successfully, it goes up the chain. That happens for all chains that run um, successfully. What makes test for at A so awesome is that the way it interacts with comparators. So in this case, the strength of this redstone signal will increase or decrease every time a player leaves or joins the game. So of course, the more players that are in the game, the stronger the signal will get. And like the, the, basically that redstone would, would become powered much, much further out if you kept on continuing it. Um, and as players leave, that signal gets, that signal strength gets weaker and weaker. Now, the cool thing about comparator, um, well, about observers, is that even though we only have one space of redstone dust, it can detect the change of the pulse's strength when it increases or decreases in strength. So that means when every time a player joins or leaves the game, it knows that the strength is, of this signal has been updated and it will then power this block. So this, this right here, this portion of the build is always running all day, every day, every second, right? As, as, assuming there's a player in game, then it's not. But this section over here, this portion of the build, will only run every time a player joins or leaves the game. Okay, so now let's look at this. Here, in this block, we're going to remove whatever scoreboard that we're copying everything into. So this is our basically our new display scoreboard. We're going to first remove it. Now, if you haven't already made the scoreboard, it, it's fine. You don't have to make it beforehand. So long as you have everything set to unconditional like you should for the system, it will work just fine. And I'll show you that. So first it tries, first you have to remove that new scoreboard that you made that's that copied everything into. And then you need to create that scoreboard again. Um, and I'll explain why that is. But basically here, we're going to create that scoreboard. This is where you can create, you can actually create for the very first time just like this. You don't have to enter into chat or anything. You can just type it in here. And the way um, adding a scoreboard works, if you didn't already know this, um, is after the word dummy, Whatever you type after the word dummy is how it will display on your screen. And that includes with the color. So if you, in this case, if you want to appear as cash, dollars, whatever, um, credits, you'd enter it like this. And if you apply a, like an alt text code to change the color, which if you don't know how to do that, Google color text in Minecraft and you'll find that very, very quickly. Um, it, it also inherits any color. So this will appear on my screen if, in green text or whatever color text you choose. Um, so that's awesome. It's really easy to change too. Like if you decide all oh, you want to change this, so next next time um, it will display as dollars. Yeah, you can just change it right here, save it, and uh, I'll show you how to update that if you want. Um, it's really simple. In fact, I'll show you. Uh, I'll do a twofer. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll keep those credits for now, and you'll see that soon. Okay. Um, okay. So this scoreboard is going to then set that scoreboard that we just added. The one that we just added, it's going to add that to, it's going to set that to the, be the new display. And ascending just means that it will go greatest to least. So if the player has 10 bucks, um, they'll be above, above a player that has five bucks. Okay. So now we're going to make that the display because that's going to be our new display um, scoreboard going forward. We're not going to display the original money scoreboard anymore. We're going to basically display the copy of it. And now we're going to add zero dollars or zero currencies or whatever to all players on the original scoreboard so here you type in the original scoreboard not the not the duplicate copy put add zero to all the other all the players in the original and the reason we do that is basically if a player just joined the game and they've never been in this world or server before they won't have a score yet on their on a money scoreboard so this will add zero to their score Instantly, so as soon as their money score has a zero add to it, it will go over here, which is this one's always running. It will copy their zero money score in money right to the duplicate scoreboard that you just made, and then it will display that on screen. So basically, what's happening here is every time a player leaves or joins and this runs, it, it's actually just deleting the scoreboard and replacing it with a brand new one. So money display, this money display you're looking at here, that's constantly being deleted and remade every single time a player joins the game. And you can only add players to a scoreboard who are currently on the game, who are currently online. So because of that, if a player left the game and the scoreboard got remade right when they left, 
then it's going to remake the scoreboard without them. So their player offline thing will disappear because they're not online to be added. But the player offline will still exist on the original money scoreboard that you're not displaying anymore. So if I want to emulate what it would be like um, for a player to come to this game or leave this game, like to join or leave this game, all I'd have to do to get this system running is break this redstone dust and then add it again. Or I could leave the game and come back. You have the option to leave and come back and it would work just, just the same. But if you just made this right now and you did not have the scoreboard, um, then then it would add right when you break this and, and, and yeah, the second you break this, it will add. So when I break this, watch. All the players will disappear from offline and we'll be good to go. Boom. Look at that. Look how satisfying that is. So you can see how it flickers here. Every single time I break like this this spot updates, it's like I said, this, the scoreboard is actually being deleted and re-added. Deleted and re-added. So yeah, um, you don't need any ticks of delay in anything here. Um, this can all run as quickly as possible. And actually it, it's, it works much, much better if you have it set to that. You don't want any ticks of delay in this build. So yeah, so that's that's super cool how it works. And here's an example if you, if you wanted to change um, the way it appear on screen. Well, you could easily change the name to cash. It's not gonna update right away because this only runs every time a player joins or leaves the game, right? So if we want to force this to run, we can leave the game and come back and it will already be updated. Or we can just break this dust and replace it again, which would force an update into this column right here because this observer would see that uh, this block has changed. So once I break this, it will change from credits to cash. Look at that. Pretty, pretty awesome, huh? It's, it's really, really um, pretty straightforward how it works, but it's so powerful and a lot of people don't understand how the system works and really can't offer a proper explanation. Um, but this mechanic right here, this test for red A uh, with the comparator, this relationship is amazing for so many systems that we can build in the game. Um, and understanding how that works is just very powerful in what you can do moving forward and other things that you build. I believe that's everything. Again, I change this back up oh, and now it's back to credits. So I believe that's everything that I want to go over. Um, again, make sure that you place the second, the original scoreboard, place that second. So just place that second in this block right here. Um, place that second and, it will, and, and this, this first scoreboard will inherit all the values from the second one, all right? So thank you very much for your time, guys. I appreciate it as always. Hopefully you understand. Hopefully, hopefully I helped. Let me know if this was helpful and if you actually understand this now, because it is. I, it was confusing when I first learned too. Um, but I've been uh, obsessed with command blocks for like many months now. So I really, really have a strong understanding of this stuff now. So let me know if this helped you, um, and let me know if you ended up building this. And yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, follow. Or do whatever, um, share, do all that fun stuff. Really appreciate it, guys, and have a nice day.